All right, so today I'm going to show you guys how to do a voltage draw test using a voltmeter and oscilloscope, um, an oscilloscope on voltage and an oscilloscope with an amp probe. So this should be interesting. Um, you really only need a voltmeter, but we'll see. All right, so what we have is our setup. This is the um, the voltmeter. We have the blue lead, I mean the black lead, connected to the battery negative. We have our red lead connected to a body ground over here next to the PCM. And we are reading zero millivolts right now. And we are set on a 200 millivolt scale. And what we have on the red trace is our amperage lead, our high amp clamp, our um, Hantec CC650, 650 amperage amp clamp. And that is around our negative battery terminal. And we are reading minus 40 milliamps. That's not right. We need to zero that out. So let's zero this thing out. It's not going to give us the most accurate results with this amp clamp because it's such a high voltage amp clamp. I mean, such a high current amp clamp. So it doesn't really read lower amperages very well. But you'll be able to see the differences in the trace on the um, oscilloscope when the door is open simulating a load you know like a light stand on well actually the lights would be standing on because I opened the door you know but um it's just simulating a load and we'll show you what the difference is, is and what to look for when testing for a, um, a current draw and um alright so the yellow trace we have 3.2 millivolts right now and that is connected battery negative and a negative ground post on the um, strut tower right there. That's our connection right there. Showing 2.8 millivolts where it was 3.2 millivolts. But anyway, that's gonna bounce around a little bit because the connection isn't the greatest. Let's see if we can fix that. Maybe it'll stay at 2.8. All right, so let's simulate a load um, by opening the door and you'll see the movement on the um, oscilloscope as well as the voltmeter. Got the lights on and you can see it right there. Let's stop it and let's go back. Right there is where the door opened up and that went up to 9 amps. You can see right there all the way at the top. It's pretty much off the screen. And the yellow trace went up to 6.6 .6 millivolts. So let's get it going again. Alright, and the yellow trace is back down to 3.8 millivolts, which is rest. You know, with the door closed, no modules on, no lights on, no loads. And we've got zero, we got zero voltage over there, zero volts on the um, voltmeter, which means there's no voltage drop, which means there's no load on the system right now. Well, there's a small load, a very, very small load. There always is going to be a very small load on these systems because all of the computers don't shut down completely, but it's such a small load that the voltmeter can't pick it up. All right, so let's do this again. And let's keep it rolling. We're not going to stop the oscilloscope so that you can see it. You'll see it. I mean, you'll be able to see it, but I'm not going to stop it and freeze it. So let's let's do this again. Let's open the door. Lights are on. Headlights on. There it is. We got 4.5 millivolts showing up on the voltmeter. Let's watch both of them. So watch both traces drop down continuously. This is as everything is powering off. The lights are turning off. Interior lights are turning off. kind of hard to see much movement on the yellow trace because it's such um, 
going to be such small movements because it's, it's measuring in millivolts. But that's pretty much rest voltage right there, 2.8 to 3.6. It's going to move up and down a little bit just because of system noise. It's going to be between 3.2 and 3.8 millivolts. And the um, voltmeter doesn't really pick up the system noise. It doesn't sample as high as it. It doesn't have a high sample rate like the oscilloscope does. So it's not going to pick a lot of these things up. It's going to miss a lot of a lot of the um, little voltage spikes here and there in the system noise. But um. It's a good tool to use for measuring, you know, checking for voltage, for current draws, I should say, by using the voltage drop method. All right, let's show this one more time. Again, I got my red lead on the voltmeter hooked up to the body ground, black lead from the voltmeter connected to the battery negative. I have the same thing on the yellow trace, channel two battery negative, body ground, and the amp clamp goes around either the positive or the negative cables. You want to put it around all of the cables, not just one of them. I can't, there's no way I could do it on the positive side because the cables are going all over the place. So I put it on the negative side. And when you're measuring amperage, it doesn't matter, you know, if it's negative or positive side of the system, amperage still flowing through the system that way. Either way, you can measure it that way with amperage. Alright, so let's do this again. Let's open the doors and show you what we got. There it is, everything's powering back off. Boom, that's it. It's done. Alright, so that's how you measure, um, that's how you check for a current draw on pretty much any vehicle. You can use the same concept. You basically just, um, checking for a voltage drop across the system because where there is current flow there's going to be a voltage drop and you can check that voltage drop right at the battery instead of doing it at the fuse you can do it at the fuses you know checking one fuse by one fuse one at a time to find the exact location of your um, of your load I mean not the load but your, your voltage draw your current draw and that's the best way to pinpoint you know where exactly it is but to see if you even have a draw you would check it directly at the battery Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, just like it. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.